Welcome to the Transformers Reanimated Podcast. This is episode 12. Today we will be doing a reading of Transformers Reanimated Down Under Blunders from issue 9 or issue 9. Uh, I am joined with my writing partner, Greg. How you doing, Greg? I'm good. Hello. This is, uh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> it is. I What I love... Uh, about working with you, Greg, is we do everything together. We write everything together. We come up with plots together. And I'm <laughs> just dying to dive into this script that clearly you wrote completely by yourself without telling me. <laughs> uh, we are also joined by good friend Mike Seibert from Mike Seibert's Radio. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be back. I mean, I'm I'm kind of bummed that there's no Bumbly Bee in this one, but I, I'm really excited to cut into this. This is a really fun story. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, I was just listening to your podcast, actually, about the the Kickstarter project, maybe someday. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, that seems like something we need in these trying times. The story of promise and hope. Absolutely, and that uh, that Kickstarter goes through the second uh, of July. So depending upon when this episode drops, uh, there's probably still time to go check it out. It's uh, maybe someday ks dot com, and yeah, check out my interview with a Wave Blue World co publisher, uh, Tyler Chin Tanner. He kind of breaks down how, uh, like we were just saying, you know, we could use more hopeful stories. You know, a little more utopia, a little less dystopia. You know, kind of uh, more Star Trek and a little less Mad Max, which I think is kind of apropos given uh, uh, what we're talking about today. But it was a really fun interview, and that's, uh, that's, that's one of the funnest things I do on my podcast is interviewing uh, independent creators. And, and yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's going to be a really cool book. A lot of, a lot of cool folks uh, working on this story. I don't have a list in front of me. I don't want to run any of it down or take too much time. But listen to the interview. It is a lot of fun, and back the Kickstarter if you can. Dude, I'm 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 addicted to Kickstarter like some people are addicted to heroin. So you you aren't helping. And in this case, it's it's a good thing. Uh, also with us is Aaron from Autopod Decepticast. How you doing, Aaron? Fantastic. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. And I think this, Ryan's there too. I am as well. Thank you. We're in the same room. We are. We're in my basement. The two two headed monster. <laughs> You guys just dropped, what, season two, episode eight today? Yeah, uh, Atlantis Arise was our episode today, our episode 129. But Atlantis Arise is a very fun episode, if anybody remembers. That's the one where um, Laserbeak and Buzzsaw together discover a, you would think they would call it the lost city of Atlantis, but it's the the lost city of sub-Atlantis. Atlantica. It's very strange. (laughs) For whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so you get to encounter King Nergil, the, the sea man who sounds like the, does he sound a little bit like, uh, Merman from He-Man, but more muffled and... I don't think there's any gurgling. <laughs> no, okay. Well. <laughs> but he is, he is voiced by Wally Burr. That's true. There needs to be an action figure of this character immediately. Third party providers? Was, I get on it. it. Yeah, that's a great episode. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, we uh, we divvied out characters beforehand. Is everybody ready? everybody ready to jump in? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. All right. And uh, so I just want have to explain a lot of this as well. So <laughs> just just jump okay. on in if you need. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> Some as... I have notes about that. Some of this I don't believe is is language. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell kind the of English words, is this? Okay. <laughs> everybody says it. I hear a lot of things. It's language. <laughs> Uh, before we jump in, I just want to acknowledge Damon Bat's art here on the cover, doing the lines and the colors, uh, homaging the only movie Greg has ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Seriously? So there you go. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the Mad Max movies. Holy shit. I'm sorry, shit. what? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> if they handed Is that just on that. principle because you're tired of people talking to you about them or something? No, I just never I went, like, I was... I mean, I'm about the same age as you guys, so when they came out, I just sort of was watching Transformers and things like that, but I just never went back to watch them, and then just, yeah. Have you seen of... Crocodile Dundee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you Crocodile can hear him even an Australian-produced feature? No. Yeah, it okay. is. Okay. Yeah, right. I think it is. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Paul Hogan's Australian. <laughs> 
It was pretty much his movie, so I would assume oh, okay. it was made. It was, well, it was made here, but I'm assuming it was made by an Australian film company awesome. as well. But podcast has barely started, and we've got a scandal already. You haven't seen the <laughs> fucking movie Jeez. that covers homaging. <laughs> <coughs> Jesus. All right. <laughs> Are we all ready to dive in? Well, to be fair, mm-hmm. do, you, do you want to claim Mel Gibson or what? <laughs> I've been trying to pawn him off on you. <laughs> That's you guys. Started. Yeah. Because he was a good react. So. Right. We can claim Mel Gibson up to like 1996. I think he was still bad. <laughs> we just didn't know it. <laughs> well, that's wildly uncomfortable. Um, but but <laughs> side side tangent though, because I I was thinking about this. I was waiting for an opportunity to jump in and saying like, "Whoa, man, Gregory, how can you call yourself Australian?" But what what is the would be the American counterpart to where like if we shared with folks from another country that you know we haven't seen blank, you know what's the movie they would say like, "Oh, and you call yourself American? You need to surrender your citizenship." I, I'm I'm yeah. I've drawn a blank. I don't. I. I don't know. What do you guys think? Because most movies feel like they're made in the United States, it's hard to. It's say. our only major export anymore. <laughs> Independent. Die Hard. <laughs> I was to say Top oh. Gun, maybe. <laughs> No, I think yeah. you're on it with the Independence Day because that that is uh, yeah yeah <laughs> that that needs to be remastered with uh, America. Fuck yeah, <laughs> from uh, <laughs> Team America. In there, yeah. but, uh, Welcome to Earth. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, by right, the way, well, a line that's never uttered in the movie. What are you talking about? He, ne- I don't think he ever says it. I think it was in the advertisements for the movie, but I don't think it's in the movie proper. I don't have those figures. What I line is that? don't think that's accurate because I think he punches that Fulio in his face, and he's all "Welcome to Earth." Yeah, I think, yeah, he does I say think it. that's right. I, I don't mean, think I don't think you guys. I I think you want to believe you're right, but I think it's actually listeners it's, right it's into a, uh, Transformers reanimated. It's a and, Mandela. <laughs> it's a Mandela effect thing. Mm. Oh, I don't You're think a is. Mandela effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a cigar in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign of American dominance. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Maybe it's on the release. Maybe it's on the Australian DVD release. <laughs> <laughs> See, there it is. Full circle. <laughs> now we can proceed. <laughs> yes. All right. Gentlemen, page one, panel one. Exterior space. Caption. Think Victor Caroli here. Four and a half million years ago. With a splash panel, a broken down spacecraft flees through the cosmos, chased by its much larger and imposing pursuer as both ships duck and weave through an asteroid field. Prowl captioned. You're right, Magnus. We found them. Panel two. Interior. Prowl's ship. Prowl sits in the captain's chair in the center of the ship's control room. At the forward helm console, Top Spin pilots the ship while Twin Twist mans a scientific console on the left. All three Autobots look up at the ship's digital view screen, on which the face of Ultra Magnus can be seen. Prowl. That tip from Nightbeat seems to have paid off. I got those convicts right where I want them. Ultra Magnus through the view screen. Excellent work, Prowl. Those three have run wild for far too long, and stealing the prototype advanced computer enhancer has crossed the line. Top spin under his breath. I prefer to call it the ace. (laughs) That's under his breath. Sounds constipated. (laughs) (laughs) He is also constipated. (laughs) Panel three. Pukano everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's Panel called Top Spin. <laughs> As Top Spin and Twin Twist continue manning their stations, Prowl ends the conversation. The view screen winks out like an old black and white television, but not before hearing Ultra Magnus's final words. Prowl. I agree, Magnus. We'll have all three convicts in custody within the hour. Ultra Magnus. Excellent. That'll be one less unsolved mystery to deal with. Ultra Magnus out. I want to say that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've been ma- I've been binging um, unsolved mysteries on Amazon Prime when I was from working from home, and um, it is very satisfying just to listen to Robert Stack speak. <laughs> 
I like. Did you ever see his uh, cameo in Basketball as well, where he's doing the un- unsolved mysteries thing? That was pretty cool. Oh, I for- yes, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. We still have no will- fucking idea where this guy is. <laughs> the, the interesting thing, I will say, just real quick, the interesting thing about watching them is they do do updates up until like two years ago. They tack it on to the story, and um, but then you're heartbroken because like if they don't do an update at the end of the story, you're like, oh no, yeah. that woman never found her son. <laughs> It's still unsolved. Yeah, it's <laughs> anyway, it's it's great. <laughs> Page 2, panel 1. Twin Twist's computer console bathes him in a red light as Prowl looks over his shoulder. Twin Twist. Prowl, we've got a problem. Sensors are reading a massive spatial anomaly is about to open up directly ahead. He is constipated. <laughs> <laughs> Prowl. A spatial anomaly? Twin twist. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> Since we're going with constipated. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Panel two. Exterior. Space. <clears throat> Both ships are dwarfed by the appearance of a wormhole. Its edges swirl like the Milky Way itself, while its center looks like bath water disappearing down a drain. Twin twist captioned. <laughs> a wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> Panel 3, Interior, the Convict Ship. Three panicked Transformers stand cramped in a tiny control room that appears to be much smaller and far less comfortable than Prowl's. Runabout and his partner in crime, Runamuck, stand gawking at their view screen image of the wormhole. The ship's pilot can barely be seen. Only his shoulder is visible in the corner of the panel. Runamuck. What the heck is that? Runabout. To the off-panel pilot. Who cares? Just get us out of here, pipsqueak. Panel 4. The one we all know as Outback sits in the pilot's seat, turning his face, turning to face runabout and run amok behind him. His color scheme at this point is a combination of several silvers and grays, while his finish is immaculate. Runabout holds a glowing metal orb in his right hand. It is the stolen Advanced Computer Enhancer, or ACE for short. Outback. I just have to interject. We forgot to figure out if Outback isn't Australian yet, is he does, Is he talking like run amok and run about as well? I would love it if you did that. <laughs> Do like a hillbilly accent? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <a> terrible one. <laughs> but then why don't run a buck? Run a buck? <laughs> And roundabout. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> why, why don't they well, change to Australian later then? Because they don't watch TV. See, oh, that's you, right, TV. Okay. See, you guys Spoilers. Do know. <laughs> also, you you guys do know about shipping then, because these guys are totally a couple. See, you got you got your ship names already <laughs> figured out, Aaron. You're learning. Good job. Round a muck and a muck about. <laughs> All right, so shitty, uh, a terrible. What do you call it? Hillbilly accent or trucker accent? If I have to try and do Australian accent here in a moment, you yeah, I, right. I like the idea of you having to do this. <laughs> All right. I keep telling you, that's not my name. Ah, oh, damn it. That was pretty good. <laughs> Better than what we're going to do later. <laughs> try not to be Einhide. Like <laughs> Run amok. I don't care what your name is. Just get us out of here. Full speed. Outback. <laughs> Sorry. Full speed, are you crazy? Not only are we being chased by the greatest Autobot cop in the system, but that's a wormhole. We fly too close and boom! Maybe we should just turn ourselves in. Runabout. Turn ourselves in? To prowl? Yeah, right. We didn't steal the ace prototype to give up now. This little gadget holds the key to advance the learning capabilities of any Teletran model computer system. You know how much we could sell this for? Sides, you think the Autobots will just give up now that we know we got their property? Run amok. Exactly! Full speed! Now! Panel 5. Outback reluctantly agrees with the monochrome twins. Outback. Okay, just hold on to something. This is going to be rough. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, that was like my date last night. It's getting worse. (laughs) Panel 6. Exterior. Space. 
The convict ship zooms closer to the wormhole as Prowl's ship cautiously lags behind. Runamuck captioned, <laughs> Eat it, Autobots! <laughs> Page three. Really jukes a hazard. <laughs> <laughs> well, right about now, the Duke boys were in a whole mess of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Page three, panel one. Interior, the convict ship. Both runabuck and runabout. Both runamuck and runabout look over Outback's shoulder. Runabout still holds the ace in his hands. Outback. Uh oh. Runamuck. Uh oh. What? Uh oh. Outback. I told you the wormhole was too unstable. At this speed and this course headed, we can't stop. Panel two. The convict ship is pulled toward the wormhole's gaping maw. Outback captioned. We're we're being sucked into it. I put in my note and on this line, I just drew like the emoji eyes looking to the side of like I see that. I see yeah. what you did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Panel. Well, if three. we're doing a, a comic for nostalgia, we have to. We have to <laughs> yes. Discuss, yes. You know, those I love of it. things. Panel three. Interior. Prowl's ship. Prowl looks at his view screen as the convict ship disappears into the wormhole. Topspin turns to face him, as does Twin Twist. Topspin. Prowl, they're being pulled in. Should we follow them? Prowl. No. It's too dangerous. We can't risk it. Twin Twist. But we'll lose the ace. Panel 4. Close on Prowl and his annoyed expression. Prowl. I know, lousy convicts. <laughs> <laughs> Page four, panel one, exterior, space, light years away. The severely damaged convict ship appears with a flash. In the lower corner of the panel sits a prehistoric planet Earth with the continent of Australia clearly visible. Panel two, interior, the convict ship. Flames light up the control room. Sparks fly from several consoles. Runabout holds his panicked hands up to his head while Runabout frighteningly hugs the ace as though he were protecting a child. Meanwhile, Outback is desperately trying to pilot the dis dilapidated craft. Runamuck. What do we do? What do we do? Runabout. Come on, Pipsqueak. Get us out of here. Outback. I told you that's not my name. I also told you we shouldn't have flown too close to that wormhole. Panel three. Close on out. Wormhole. Get him a banjo. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> hey, I gotta get my shots in with accents now because you, you, you guys are gonna give it back pretty pretty hard pretty soon. Oh, I think, boy. So. <laughs> right. Panel three. Close on Outback. Outback. But I think I can still save us. All we need to do is carefully... Panel 4. With his left hand, Runamuck shoves Runabout aside to reach over Outback and slam his right hand on the helm controls. As such, Runabout begins to awkwardly juggle the ace. Runamuck. Carefully nothing! Get us out of here! Now! Runabout. Whoa! Outback. Hey, stop it. <laughs> that was a bit walking, actually. That Sorry. was a bit walking. <laughs> hey, ha hey, stop that. Yeah, we're going to crash. Oh. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Your father walked around for years with the ace shoved up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Australia. <laughs> Not dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> Panel 5. From behind, the convicts, we can see through their view screen to witness the ship is now rapidly careening toward the Earth, and more specifically, Australia. Outback argues with Runamuck, while Runabout continues to juggle the bobbling ace, which has begun to glow a precarious yellow color. Outback. What have you done? I told you we needed to be careful. Thanks to your cave bot touch, the ship has gone into overdrive. Run amok. Meaning? Outback. We we're going to crash. Run about. Bumbling with the now glowing ace. 
uh, guys, uh, this is starting to get weird. <laughs> First time on bath salts, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Panel six, run amok angrily drags the much smaller Outback from the helm station, tossing him into runabout and the ace. Run amok. Out of the way, Runt. I'll handle this. Outback. Hey, watch it. Runabout. No, look out. (laughs) Panel seven. The white hot ace sails out of Runabout's hands and burns itself into Outback's chest. Outback. Ah! Sounds like it hurt. Yes. <laughs> Good acting. Yes. Yeah, acting. Page, <laughs> <laughs> page five, panel one. Even more violent sparks and erratic flames now litter the control room. As the ace continues to melt into Outback's chest, Runabout confronts Runamunk, arrogantly trying to pilot the ship on his own. Runabout. That's you. Oh, I <laughs> highlighted the wrong thing. <laughs> what are you doing? Can you save us or not? Run amok. Sure, it's a piece of cyber cake. All I gotta do is force the engines into a full throttle. Outback. Full throttle? No, stop. Panel two. Close on Outback. The ace has now buried itself deep into his chest, causing spiderweb-like scorch marks to streak across his once pristine finish and slowly changing it to more to his more familiar G1 khaki color scheme. Outback. Not full throttle. That'll overload the engines. Back out, run em out, run em up. Back out. Panel three. Exterior. Earth's upper atmosphere. Day. Like a flaming meteorite, the convict ship hurtles towards the Australian continent. Outback. Captioned. I said, back out, back out. Panel four. Exterior. Prehistoric Australia. Day. Hmm. Doesn't look much different. The convict ship... <laughs> the convict <It's> ship... <laughs> the convict ship crashes into the dirt like an Olympic javelin plunging into the ground. Certainly the kind of crash you wouldn't walk away from. Outback. Captioned. Back. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> it, is, it is true that the animals in that uh, neck of the world look like they just stepped out of the ocean well, everything is, deser- is designed to kill you <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't want you around <laughs> panel 5 the ship has now buried itself deep into the blood red soil of a mountainous mound of earth smoke rises from the rear thrusters, reminiscent of a famous Autobot arc. Panel 6. The crash triggers a landslide which completely buries the convict ship. Panel 7. Exterior. Mount Isa. Modern day. Afternoon. Caption. Outside Mount Isa, Australia, four and a half million years later. The convict ship's former crash site has now become a modern day zinc mine, complete with tall smokestacks, man-made dirt tracks, and worker caravans. The small town of Mount Isa can be seen on the horizon. Page Yoshi, 6. You'll have to you have to pronounce it like a Z or a Z for you. Mount Isa. Mount Isa. Yeah. The fuck I do. <laughs> <laughs> America. <laughs> God damn it. Well, welcome to Earth. <laughs> Is the zinc mine a sink mine then? <laughs> there are no, no rules. Just right. <laughs> you probably told me this, and Mount Isa will not be mentioned again. Yeah. <laughs> Big because, six. Yeah, people will be like, that Australian guy didn't tell him how to say Mount Isa. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Page 6, panel 1. Two eight-year-old boys run by a barricaded side entrance to the mine. Trevor is a blonde-haired blue and blue-eyed, while Cameron is of Aboriginal heritage. Cameron also holds a walkie-talkie in his hand. Note, Cameron is dressed in shorts and a tank top, while Trevor wears a t-shirt, shorts, and a backwards cap. Both boys also wear flip-flops on their feet, Known as Austra- known to known by Australians as thongs. Cue the song. Thongs. <laughs> thong, thong. Let me see your thong. 
thongs. That's what my actually my mother called them thongs. Same here. Is, yeah. 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 If you're a kid born in the late seventies, maybe yeah. that's. <laughs> she was being thong. dirty and just like in front of me. <laughs> well, maybe as kids that were born in the late seventies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no one calls them flip-flops here. They're thongs. Cameron, into his walkie-talkie. Come in, Moon Command. This is Captain Cameron. Come in, Moon Command. Trevor. (laughs) 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 I'm working on it. I'm hoping it evens out as I go. (laughs) But probably not. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) Panel two. Trevor and Cameron stare at the walkie-talkie as a voice replies. We'll soon find out it belongs to their friend, Faye. Faye, through the walkie-talkie. Reading you loud and clear, Captain. Proceed with your mission. Trevor. Wait, where is she? Cameron. We need your location. Uh, Moon Command, where are you? It's not bad. We're doing good. Day. We're doing good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait for it to fall apart. I've heard. I've heard a lot worse. Trust me, of, <laughs> of Americans trying to do Australian <laughs> accents. There's not very many good ones, really. No. <laughs> yeah, but not all of us can be yeah, Ewan yeah, McGregor. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Panel three. Faye, another eight-year-old, this time a girl with red pigtails and freckles, stands behind the barricades that block the mine entrance. She smiles at her two friends as both Cameron and Trevor turn back to face her with surprise. Note, Faye is slightly better dressed than her friends. She wears what might be considered tomboy overalls over her t-shirt with dusty sneakers on her feet. Faye. Behind you. (laughs) (laughs) Trevor. Whoa. On the reefs. <laughs> Cameron. Oi! It's <laughs> great. Panel four. Cameron angrily confronts Faye while Trevor seems worried. Cameron. Hey, you know the rules, Faye. My dad says we can't be playing or hiding up around here. Trevor. Yeah, Cameron's right. Hey, me dad says the same thing. <laughs> Just changing the lines. To- <laughs> It works. That fits. <laughs> Panel five. Interior. Inside the mine entrance. From inside the dark tunnel, Faye scuttles forward with the mine. Scuttles further into the mine, leaving both Cameron and Trevor to peer in with trepidation. Faye. What? No way. Don't be a pair of scaredy cats. Besides, I found something cool. Come on. You sound you like eye, you got the eyes down. Uh, Ryan, for sure. Besides, I, I don't. <laughs> Thanks. You sound like the caterpillar from um, uh, uh, what? Mad Holy Max. Holy shit! No, no, no. No, <laughs> Mad uh, Max. The caterpillar. I love the that. caterpillar scene in Mad Max. I, was say, I thought it was a caterpillar. Uh, <laughs> I want to say Never Ending Story, but that's not it. Um, with, uh, 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 oh my god. Use your words. Sound it out. Trying. <laughs> David Bowie and uh, Labyrinth. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I don't remember anything about that movie. I don't remember that part. But uh, uh, aside like, from <laughs> Bowie's massive cod piece, yeah, every, like I think everybody in the world just wants to bang Bowie from that movie. Never forget. Yeah, it. man. <laughs> I did. So much cock. Panel six. <laughs> <laughs> Panel 6, both Cameron and Trevor chase after Faye as she disappears further down the dark tunnel. Cameron. Faye, wait! I'm serious! Yahoo! Trevor. (laughs) Well done, Mike. Thank you. (laughs) Where where are you going? You trying to get us all in trouble? Panel 7, close on Cameron's astonished face. Cameron. What the heck? Page 7, panel 1. Interior, deeper into the tunnel. Both Trevor and Cameron stand in shock as a bright yellow light emanates from several cracks and fissures permeating the tunnel wall. Faye stands before them with her back to the light, as proud as punch. Faye. Check it out, fellas. (laughs) (laughs) Trevor. Crikey! Cameron. What is it? 
Panel 2. Faye is about to crawl into what looks like a small child-sized aperture in the tunnel wall. Standing behind her, only Cameron and Trevor's feet can be seen in the panel. Faye. Well, that's what we're going to find out, you dill. Come on. You dill? <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. All right. Like your, like your dummy. You're like, oh, you Just dill. calling people, calling you people dingus. herbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you stupid parsley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have called them Chaz Walzers. <laughs> <laughs> Gold. Played Knifey Spoonie before. Panel 3, Interior, a large subterranean cave. Having crawled through the hole and arrived on the other side, all three kids stand aghast as they, fi- as they have found the convict ship. The space vehicle is crushed beyond belief. Its cockpit windows are completely shattered. However, more radiance seeps out from within. The source of the yellow light, Faye has discovered. Cameron. It's it's a spaceship! Trevor. How did a spaceship get here? You think it's full of aliens? Faye. I don't know. It seems really old, but... Look, that light is coming from out of those windows. Let's take a gander. That one was all over the place. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't practice that line very much. That's fine. Far better than I could ever do. (laughs) And I've been hanging out with Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I hoped that talking to him would help me get in the groove. It's proving to be negligible. Yeah. (laughs) Well, there's no swearing in this one, in the script, so. (laughs) Right. That helps. Panel four. Cameron and Trevor remain in place while Faye has already climbed onto the ship, ready to crawl in through its shattered cockpit windows. Cameron. Faye, come back! You can't just climb into a spaceship like that! Faye. Why not? I'm not afraid. Besides. Panel 5. Don't drop your T's, Michael Caine. (laughs) (laughs) The size of a tangerine. Yeah. Panel 5. Interior, the convict ship. An inert and now rust-brown colored outback sits on the floor, the ace still fused to his chest and emitting the yellow light from earlier. Over his shoulder, Cameron and Trevor have now joined Faye to peer into the ship through the shattered cockpit windows. Both the boys appear shocked while Faye is, n- uh, is nothing but elated. Faye. I reckon we just found a transformer. <laughs> oh, shit, bro. <laughs> Is that another little um, eye looking to the side emoji? On your, on your notes, right? <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go get some wall burgers. <laughs> Page eight, panel one. Exterior, Mount St. Hillary. The Autobot Arc, night. The famous Autobot Ark sits in its mountain home. News reporter, captioned. I just, I just realized I've been practicing that yeah. with an Australian accent <laughs> of sorts. Um, are there many Australians doing news reports in the United States? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Former businessman and Decepticon synthesizer Sean Berger was Synthes- controversial. What? He's a keyboard. (laughs) (laughs) Former businessman and Decepticon sympathizer Sean Berger was controversially released from prison today on what many legal experts are calling a technicality. Panel 2. Yeah, it was good. Panel 2. Interior. The Autobot Arc. Prowl sits alone watching Teletran 1 and its data screen image of Sean Berger from Megatron's master plan. As he gazes upon Berger's face, Prowl seems less than impressed. Prowl. Unbelievable. News reporter, voice only, streaming from Teletran 1. Earlier, Mr. Berger stated he'd held no ill will towards the government, and more importantly, the Autobots, for his so-called wrongful imprisonment, vowing to get on with his life and return to... Panel 3, Prowl sits up with sudden interest as Teletran 1's data screen switches from the image of Berger to an alert screen, now displaying the words, Warning, unique energy signature detected. Prowl. We got some voice work from Yoshi there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it. used to it. 
<laughs> There's no spike. <laughs> Prowl. Hey, what's all this about? Unique energy signature? Panel 4, close on Prowl's face as it becomes clear he has stumbled upon some shocking information. Prowl. It can't be. After all this time? Panel 5, Prowl looks over his shoulder to see Sideswipe walking by. Prowl. Sideswipe, something's come up. Mind if I borrow your jetpack? Sideswipe. My rocket pack? Sure thing, but what's what's the situation? Need a hand? Prowl. No, I'll take care of it. It's personal. Why is Teletran 1 just now detecting this energy signature? Just got unburied. I don't know. <laughs> just the cracks opened up just enough. Yeah. Crack the window. Greg, answer these questions. There's a lot to monitor. <laughs> it's picking up. Uh, it's picking up the kids, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't isolate that. <laughs> it's register. It's registering. Regist- registering the kids being inside the ship. <laughs> You're gonna need to register. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. Panel like six. What? I said, I like that one. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> Panel six. With the jet pack in his hands, Prowl transforms into police car mode, then races toward the Ark's exit while Sideswipe watches on. Prowl. Tell Prime I'll be back in a day or two. I've waited a long time for this. Whoosh. <laughs> 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 and away he he's just doing the freakazoid just with his yes. arms out <laughs> yes <laughs> panel 7 exterior Mount St. Hillary the Autobot arc night like a rocket Prowl roars off into the night sky with Sideswipe's jetpack strapped to his back both the mountain and the arc appear on the ground far below him Prowl lousy convicts I've got you now uh, note, this panel should homage Scarscream's Ow My Foot moment from the 1986 movie. Page 9, panel 1, interior, the convict ship. Inside the devastated control room, Cameron, Trevor, and Faye stand before the dormant outback. The ace continues to glow. The apparently deactivated bodies of both Runamuck and Runabout lie nearby. Runabout is slumped in a sitting position while Runamuck is face down on the floor. Lazy fucks. Cameron. Wow, real life Transformers. Three of them, just like the ones I saw on the telly. Trevor. And what's wrong with the brown one? And what's that glowy doodad sticking out him? Faye. Hold on, I'm sorry. I think I. Okay, I'm sorry. I lost my place for some reason. Okay, all right, sorry. <laughs> Ryan I needs don't know. To get back into character. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I turned too many pages. <laughs> I don't know. Let's have a closer look. What do you reckon? Panel two. Faye tries to pull the ace free of Outback's chest. Trevor, from off panel. Oi, Faye, wait. No. It, it's radioactive. <laughs> radioactive. No? <laughs> panel three. A blast of yellow energy shoots out from the ace like a shockwave, the other kind. Filling the room and subtly washing over both Runamuck and Runabout. Panel 4. The kids eagerly stand before Outback as his eyes light up and a large Energo blade protrudes from his wrist like Wolverine's claws. Cameron. Oh, look! He's waking up! Trevor. Whoa! Where'd that sword come from? Faye. Hey, big man. We're friends, right? Friends? Can you talk? It's a Joan Rivers impression. (laughs) Can we talk? (laughs) Panel 5. Close on Outback's concerned face. Outback. Out. Back. Out. Back. (laughs) His brain's not working now either. Yeah. (laughs) The kids continue to stand before Outback as he rises to his feet. Faye. Elbeck? Is that your name? That's funny. <laughs> she got, turned into Hermione she at the end. That's <laughs> funny, Harry. Harry! <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Cameron. 
Uh, I I don't think he can talk properly, Faye. The crash must have busted him up good and proper. Trevor. Let's take him back to my place. My dad won't be home until tonight. Is that okay with you? Out back? Panel 7. Outback's Energo blades disappear back into his wrist as he gives a thumbs up with the other hand. Faye. Yes, this is the best day ever. I like the thumbs up also Cybertronians have that same that same <laughs> motion. I'm glad it doesn't mean I'm about to murder you. <laughs> yeah. Then he, he just does the gladiator and slowly does the <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> Panel 8. In the background, Outback and the kids have climbed up and through the shattered cockpit, while in the foreground, with his face on the floor, Runamuck's eyes begin to glow red. Faye. And it's only gonna get better. Page 10, panel 1, exterior. Trevor's place, afternoon. On a large, expansive plot of land, a decent-sized yet semi-rundown shed sits in the foreground, with the resident's main homestead perched in the background. The shed is clearly housing some kind of activity, from various clanging sounds echoing from its corrugated iron construction. Note, the house in the background should resemble that, uh, what is known in Australia as an old Queenslander. Fay, unseen inside the shed. So now what do we do? Panel 2, interior, inside the shed. Outback sits crammed inside the shed. While not the biggest of bots, he still dwarfs all three of the kids. He sits with blank expression. He sits with blank expression as the three children stand around him, pondering his fate. Trevor. What do you mean, what do we do? He can just stay here till he gets better. Cameron. Gets better? How long is that gonna take? Panel 3. Faye stands before an old-fashioned 1970s black-and-white television which sits on top of a stack of three other non-functional sets. Faye. (laughs) Who knows? In the meantime, though. Panel 4. Close on Faye's hand, flicking the television's on switch. Faye. Let's see what's on the telly. Panel 5. The television lights up to reveal a small boy talking to a kangaroo, triggering a glowing reaction from the ace still lodged in Outback's chest. The kids react as though a set of fireworks has just gone off in front of them. Faye. What the heck? Trevor. Well. <laughs> Cameron, isn't being unsupervised fun? It's choking. <laughs> it's the 80s. No one looked after their kids in the 80s. <laughs> uh, note, the TV show that appears is called Skippy the Bush Kangaroo, a staple of 1970s, 1980s Aussie children's TV. Okay, I need this explained to me immediately. <laughs> what is the bu- Skippy the Bush Kangaroo? Is that real? Yeah, it's like um, it's like an Australian version of... Shit, I don't know. Flipper or the littlest hobo. <laughs> so it's live action with a real kangaroo? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And Isn't that incredibly like, dangerous? Yeah. That kangaroo was definitely abused. <laughs> there's all the. Oh, oh yeah. It's probably like a Milo and Otis situation. <laughs> Did it talk like Mr. Ed? No, it doesn't talk. No. Oh. So. All right. Although the, just... kid, the kid can understand him. Oh, oh, her, actually. Skippy was a girl. But yeah. So the, oh, so it's like Lassie. Was, yeah, kind of, yeah. Does the kid ride around in the pouch of her? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be amazing. What a wasted opportunity. <laughs> it's funny because there's all these little... Uh, there's all, Every now and then, like, Skippy would have... To, it's a terrible show. Like, even as a kid, <laughs> nobody liked it. But, like... Oh. It, 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 well, there's one TV channel. we got to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's just that there's nothing else on. Um, but they do all these inserts, so like the you know Skippy would like unlock the fence or something, and there'd just be these two like little kangaroo hands, and you know someone's just holding them off. <laughs> off I, lo- I have to look this up after oh, yeah, time. Find it on YouTube. They- you will you will laugh. <laughs> so so are they obviously fake kangaroo hands that are oh, yeah. being man? Yeah. It like somebody's got them on sticks and they're. Pretty opening much. the gate. Oh Off. yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> Toonsus, Toonsus the driving cat is what I'm kind of picturing. If you're familiar with that reference. Oh god. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Panel 6. A beam of solid energy shoots out of the ace and into the television, which then fires a similar burst from its wire coat hanger antenna up and through the roof of the shed. Panel 7. Exterior. Space. Above the Earth. With a global view of Australia, the energy blast rockets up from Mount Isa and into an <laughs> orbiting satellite. <laughs> Page 11. Panel 1. Interior. Inside the shed. The energy now surrounds both Outback and the television as the three kids stand watching with worried expressions. Cameron. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Cameron just hit puberty. It was, it was at that point. It was at that point. Mike was going to be nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> I made a meal of that line. Panel two, close on Outback's face as he appears to be overloading. Panel three, the energy has faded, leaving Outback sitting before the three kids with smoke and steam pouring off his metal hide, while Cameron and Faye turn to each other with concern. Trevor looks off panel as his father's voice cries out, Cameron. What was that all about? Trevor's father from off panel. Oh, Trevor! What's going on out there? Why is Trevor's father abusive? I just it just sounds like he's a dick. <laughs> Trevor. Uh oh, it's me old man. He's home early. <laughs> I'm an Oliver Twist. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Hell. you can pr- you could practically hear the buckle on Trevor's father's belt. <laughs> un- I know. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I thought when I read it. He's just like he's drunk and he's looking to fight. Uh, <laughs> domestic Trevor, abuse. I hope your friends are here because I want to beat more than just you. <laughs> <laughs> you always go down so easy. <laughs> We do live in Mount Isa, so it's possible. (laughs) Is Trevor's dad the primary antagonist in The Rescuers Down Under? (laughs) Oh, boy. That's what I'm picturing. He is now. (laughs) Panel four. Trevor's hands are now cupped around his mouth as he calls out to his father. A seemingly catatonic outback remains in the background while both Cameron and Faye move toward the shed's exit. Trevor. Nothing, Dad. I'll be right there. Please don't hit me. (laughs) Cameron. We gotta go. I can smell the whiskey from here. (laughs) Everybody's taking a bite of the apple. (laughs) Everybody gets their their licks in. (laughs) Faye, who's gonna get the worst of it. Yeah, if any of our parents found out about Outback, we'll all be in massive trouble. Panel five. <laughs> giving you a chance. I, said, I don't. I didn't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> She's a little girl. I don't want to. I don't want it anymore. Ryan no stands up it. to peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the uh, the GI Joe He Man message of the day. <laughs> like, don't stand up to peer pressure, kids. <laughs> Panel five. Exterior. Just outside the shed. Evening. Trevor stands closest to the shed's now closed corrugated corrugated iron door, while both Cameron and Faye dash off toward the edges of the panel. Trevor. Don't tell no one about this, and we'll meet back here in the morning, all right? Cameron. Sounds good, mate. Faye. See you then, fellas. Panel 6. Interior. Inside the shed. Outback remains sitting before the television as it suddenly pops back to life, revealing what looks like a commercial for a mini off-road SUV. Panel 7. Close on Outback's eyes. The reflection of the television screen can be seen in his visor optics. Several sounds of TV programming can be heard from off-panel. Television off-panel. And don't miss this week's edition of AA It's Saturday. <laughs> Guests include Ugly Dave Gray, Ricky May, and Killer Cal and the Coalettes. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I wrote. Is this real? <laughs> they sound like Howard Stern guests. <laughs> oh, no, that's real. They're real. Well, they were. Good they Lord. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were, it just were. sounds like guests on a Howard Stern show about who has the largest butthole. <laughs> 
Ugly <laughs> Dave, not, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Page 12, panel 1, exterior, the outskirts of town. Two pairs of Decepticons, Decepticon feet, one white, the other black, stand beside the lonely road that leads towards Mount Isa. Run amok. You sure it's him and the ace? Runabout. It's got to be him. And this is the only sign of civilization around here, even if it is filled with these worthless flesh creatures. Panel 2. Runabout holds what appears to be a tracking scanner in his hands, similar in design to Ripley's from Aliens. Runamuck faces Runabout. Runamuck. Then let's go get him. We'll teach him not to take the ace without us. <laughs> it is really hard to, to carve the Australian off of it is. Yeah. I, it is very hard to switch back and forth. <laughs> It's almost like we're not professionals. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't think that, I, may, I don't know, maybe Peter Cullen did do Ironhide and Prime on the same day, and those are the episodes where you can definitely hear them bleeding into each other. I just imagine he probably didn't, because it's super hard to switch off. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to hear I would like to hear Prime's lines at by Einhard though. <laughs> Put a whole new spin on the show. <laughs> Freedom is the right of all sentient beings. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Ironhide using his authority, that. huh? <laughs> Runabout. Yeah, let's take it slow. Our old partner might have his own plans for this place. I say we sneak in all stealth-like. Strike when it suits us. Run amok. Oh, stealthy. I can dig that. Panel 3. Both run amok and runabout transform into car mode and cruise towards the town. Note, both run amok and runabout's car modes should still be Cybertronian in appearance, but reminiscent of their classic G1 design. Runabout. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Thinking to go hang out with Trevor's dad. <laughs> oh, we can't around cool. to beat up your kids. <laughs> Panel four, exterior, the shed, morning. Caption, the next morning. With the early morning sun beaming down upon them, Faye walks into frame to meet Trevor and Cameron outside the shed. Both boys seem concerned as several classic Aussie sayings echo out from within the shed through the use of separated word balloons. Balloon number one. Struth. Cameron. Faye, where are you been? Balloon number two. <laughs> Wacky do. Trevor. <laughs> yeah, we've been waiting for ages. Something weird's going on in there, eh? Balloon number three. Crikey. Faye. Righto. Hold your horses, fellas. Let's go see what's going on. Panel she, uh, five. In she uh, slipped into Blackrock there for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I've always relied I... on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> I am not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Panel 5, interior, inside the shed. Looking over the kids' shoulders, Outback sits before the television, thoroughly enjoying a relaxing binge session. Faye. Inside? Panel 6, Outback turns towards the kids with a cheery smile. Outback. Oh, you get a Captain Cook at this. It's my favorite Billy Lids. Where have you been? I've been here wait for ages waiting for you to come back so I could say, thanks heaps for mending me melon. <laughs> it's just word salad. <laughs> madness on a page. <laughs> this is the Australian version of those two racist robots from Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> Do you need do you need explanations? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I mean, a lot of it's rhyming slang, so uh, okay. That get a, there's get a Captain also Cook. the yeah, okay. Get a look at this. There's the cat. Uh, I rhyming slang is impenetrable to me because there's also Cockney rhyming slang, and I'm like, I do not understand this even remotely. Right, it's very similar. Um, so yeah, get a Captain Cook at this. Let's get a look at this. Um, uh, Billy Lids, the kids. 
Uh, it sounds so complicated. Don't you have to prepare it ahead of time? <laughs> Nobody really talks like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This None of the, this is real. This is what Americans would think Australians talk about. <laughs> all Why are you sad, selling out your people you're like this? Real, come across them now. Okay. <laughs> and mended me Malin is just like <laughs> things in my head. I, I think we I, got that one figured out. Yeah, I, say, I like that one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Panel seven. All three kids react differently to Outlack. Out Outlack. All three kids react differently to Outback using their local colloquialisms. Trevor appears confused. Cameron's jaw falls wide open and with shock, while oh. Faye is all smiles. Outback. I mean, what's the John Dory? I've been here all night, having a spiffy old time, <laughs> flat out like a lizard drinking, watching the old telly. Trevor. What happened to him? Where'd he learn to talk like that? Faye. It's the TV. He learned everything from the TV. Australian TV. <laughs> it's like the kids know Australian TV is shite. Australian for TV. <laughs> Page 13, panel 1. Outback points a friendly finger towards Faye while motioning to the ace in his chest with another. Outback. Bingo, Dale. I thought I was cactus for sure, but thanks to this little beauty jammed into me chest, I'm flying, mate. Flying. <laughs> so, okay, cactus, is that like you're going to die? Yeah. Okay. Fucking what is the rhyme trying to the... deal with me for a month saying cactus constantly? Cactus. <laughs> yeah. What is the rhyme for cactus? Is that rhyming slang? No, that's not. That's just okay. fucked. So you're like, oh. <laughs> like, like, what's wrong with that one? Oh, it's cactus, man. Panel two. Faye takes a closer look at the ace as Outback continues. Faye. This thing absorbed all the local TV and taught you to be Australian. Outback. My oath, love, and after being cooped up all night, I say we bust out of here and hit the frog and toad. What do you reckon? It'll be dead set better than a Vegemite sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> frog and toad, help me out. Road. Okay. Ah. <clears throat> We're learning. That's right. It is meant to be like fuck over up. the top. Don't give it, yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's fun. I I like it a lot. It's fun. Like they're like I said, they're they are all like I guess Australian sayings, but yeah, you, no one's gonna jam them all together like that. <laughs> it would just be like Americans going hamburger, right? Yeah, baseball. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> baseball jazz. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Panel 3. Trevor remains cautious, as an eager Outback seems disappointed by the boy's reply. Trevor. Uh, I don't know, Outback. I don't think we should. I took quite a beating yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Outback. Oh, come on, mate. Fair suck of the sauce bottle. I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. It'll go off, I promise. Watch. Oof. Panel 4. Still inside the shed, Outback transforms into an off-road mini SUV, just like one seen on TV earlier. All three kids stand by in amazement. Faye. Whoa! Outback. Come on, jump in, squires. We'll go for a quick hoon and suss out the town, eh? Trevor. Around town, but, 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 we can't drive. <laughs> what the hell? Whoa, you went. <laughs> I don't know what happened Southern. there. Sorry. <laughs> He's still recovering from his beating. He's a <laughs> <laughs> I just picture him with like a big like wrap around his head and a blood mark on it. <laughs> Missing teeth. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, they must have hit you real hard this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. yes. No, no, I got up, bro. <laughs> Panel five. Close on Outback. Still in SUV mode. Outback. Drive? You? Fair dinkum, mate. You must be a few bottles short of a six-pack if you think I'm letting you drive. Yeah, nah. <laughs> People do say that one. I'll give you that. The, yeah, the nah, fair dinkum? Yeah, uh, yeah, fair dinkum. I've heard fair dinkum uh, just because I, I know a lot about Australian serial killers. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's awesome. <sighs> I thought we were going to get to a recording session. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nope. South Australia. They're all in South Australia. Sharks and sharks. Serial killers. I mean, if if you got APDC bingo out, you've uh, you've just got a square. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ryan brought it up like an asshole. 
Fair dinkum. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that proper usage? <laughs> I'm going to Greg bad. for the call. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Panel six, exterior, just outside the shed. Morning. With all three kids aboard, Outback bursts through the shed's corrugated iron door, leaping forth and into adventure. Outback. I'll do the driving. Cooey! Page 14, panel 1, exterior, the outskirts of town, morning. With Sideswipe's jetpack still strapped to his back, Prowl lands on his feet near the same road we saw run amuck and runabout earlier. Mount Isa again appears in the distance. Prowl. Finally, now, to find those convicts. <laughs> Panel two. <laughs> I just trying. love Mike being threatening. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying, man. I'm like, you, you can't see it, but I'm like trying to like, you know, sneer also while I'm doing it. And yeah, it's 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 only kind of working. <laughs> I keep thinking of Prowl as like Tommy Lee Jones in the future. <laughs> yeah. All. Yeah, because like, I'm gonna it, catch her. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all seething rage, like just just like just under the surface. Yep. <laughs> Panel two. Prowl looks down at a mini data screen that pops up from his forearm. Three small dots appear: one red, two purple, laid over a crude outline of the town. Prowl. There they are. All three of them. Panel three. Prowl transforms into police car mode and zooms off towards the town in the distance. Woo, 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 Sirens woo, woo. ablazing. Woo, woo, woo. Prowl. This is going to be even easier than I thought. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Panel four. Exterior. The streets of Mount Isa. Morning. Caption. Soon after. Inside Outback's vehicular cabin... Faye, Trevor, and Cameron smile and laugh as they cruise through the streets in their own personal transformer. Trevor. Wahoo! This is grouse. Outback. See? I told you it'd be Bonza. Where to next? Now you've capitalized Bonza. Is that a proper name? No, Bonza is, uh, well, it gets capitalized. I don't know why, because it's not really a name. Um, it's just like, Bonza is just like... Good, mm. great, you know. I'm glad I stopped the show to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Bonza. <Right>. It's for Yosh. <laughs> Bonza. Panel 5. Interior. Inside Outback's cab. Faye is distracted by, a f- by flashes of red and blue light appearing woo, woo, in the woo. rear view mirror. Cameron also looks up at the mirror while Trevor has turned to look behind them. Faye. Uh, I think we might have a problem, Outback. Cameron. The police are behind us. Trevor. Yeah, but that doesn't look like any police car I've ever seen before. Panel 6, exterior, the streets of Mount Isa Day. Prowl's driverless police car mode closes in on Outback and the kids. Trevor from off panel. It's steering wheel is... Let me start over. It's steering wheel is on the wrong side. And nobody's driving it. May I have some more? <laughs> Bear is driving? How can that be? <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's not actually a police car. He's just mimicking a police car. That's right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Bingo. Fuck everybody. <laughs> Fuck you all. <laughs> Page 15, panel 1. Interior. Inside Outback's cab. Close on Outback's interior CB radio system. Outback. Oh, no, it's Prowl. We got a bail, or we'll be up the creek without a paddle. Spear and tadpoles with a crowbar. This is where I wrote these aren't phrases. <laughs> <laughs> up the creek without a paddle. You guys have got that one. Up the creek without a... Spear and tadpoles with a crowbar. <laughs> spear and tadpoles with a crowbar. That's like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's good. I like it. I just was like, I, I wondered if you made that up. <laughs> yeah, no. I didn't make any of these up. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, that's the last time I'll bring it up. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I'll explain them because they're pretty <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Panel 2, exterior, the streets of Mount Isa Day. Outback hits a burst of speed to race away from Prowl. Prowl. Convict C-59, pull over immediately. Outback. Yeah, now you got Buckley's of that happening to me, old mucker. I'm out here (laughs) faster than a blue tail fly. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's the winner. <laughs> e- educate us, Greg. Uh, Buck- were you Buckley's? You guys got heard of that one, haven't you? No? No. Uh, Buckley's. So Buckley's Chance. So, like, no chance. Um, oh. And then uh, me old mucker. That's just shit people say. G'day, me old mucker. How you going? It's like, you know, g'day, buddy. G'day, pal, or whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm out of here faster than a blue tail fly. They, All right, that's this fast. is fun. I love I love uh, Australian colloquialisms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you remember why we called him Convict C five nine C fifty nine? God uh, damn it! I'm trying to remember. I know we had something <clears throat> behind it. Yeah, that was his like his Japanese toy code name or something. Oh, like, that. uh, like that's the release awesome. ID or something. Um, that's yeah. right. Mm. Oh, that's fun. There's a lot of real fun Easter eggs in these things. I, that's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> if somebody read that and went like, "Oh, C59, that's Outback's like I, you know, toy ID," I'd be like, "Okay." Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't expect any nerd. To get that. <laughs> Almost as if this was written by fans for fans. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you know yes. it? Because we did just have a number. We just had whatever it was, like Convict One Two Three Four, whatever it was. Um, and then, yeah, Yoshi was like, we should try and find something to, to put in. So then we sort of just dug around on the wiki for a bit. And I was like, oh, look. So, so yeah, but it works. Panel three. At top speed, Outback roars through the town of Mount Isa with Prowl in hot pursuit. Prowl. Convict C-59, I said, pull over and surrender immediately. You'll respect my authority. <laughs> Good <laughs> Outback. Uh, no way I'm doing that by Jingo by Crocky. <laughs> <laughs> See if it was re- if if we were doing the without the the kids cartoon, he'd just be like, "Fuck off, <laughs> <laughs> get bent, you piece yeah. of shit." <laughs> I said, "Pull over immediately." Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he must not have been watching HBO while he was getting all of Australia's <laughs> culture yeah. downloaded yep. into him. Yeah. Be like, fuck off, you cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to where all the American audience be like, oh, oh my God. That's what the C stands for in C59. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Panel four, interior, inside Outback's cab. Cameron, Faye, and Trevor plead with Outback to stop. Faye. Outback, you can't do this. You need to pull over. Whoa. <laughs> Let me take that again. <laughs> Outback, you can't do this. You need to pull over. It's not better. I think it was better the first time. <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> better. I'm right. starting to lose it. <laughs> Go ahead. You'll be over. Over, mate. Over. Pull over. Ah. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Outback, you can't do this. you got to pull over. 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 Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Move on. So, oi, stop. <laughs> Cameron. Yeah, that's an oil bot behind us. They're the good guys, right? Outback. But that's Prowl. He's as cunning as a dunny rat and as mad as a cut snake. Okay, right there, I will say I read, read that as cunt snake. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I read through this script. It's a slippery oh, it's a of snakes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, no. Mad as a cut snake. Yep. Uh, Trevor. Yeah. It doesn't matter, Outback. Panel 5, exterior, the outskirts of town, day. Outback and Prowl have now reached the edges of Mount Isa, returning to the familiar highway we've seen previously. Trevor. There's nowhere else to go. Panel 6, Outback transforms into robot mode as all three kids jump to safety and land on their feet. Prowl also transforms to robot mode, lifting his rifle at Outback. Prowl. Click, clack. They're right, Convict C-59. Listen to the humans. Outback. You listen, mate. I don't know what you want from me. Just don't go tropo, okay? I don't want any dramas. Take a chill pill. Let's have a little bit of a chin wag, all right? <laughs> chill pill is the outlier there for me. <laughs> chill pill? Take a chill pill. No, I know the phrase. It's just I didn't think it was that, like, the people said in the 80s. <laughs> International man, yep, and and uh, interdimensional time wise, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm convinced that Ryan Jet is time traveler with sunglasses. 
<laughs> I'll, I, no. <laughs> that sounded convincing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Page 16, panel 1. As he stands with a mechanical catcher's mitt type device in one hand, Prowl appears confused by Outback's ramblings. Prowl. What are you babbling about? All I want is the ace. The ace you stole four and a half million years ago. Panel 2. Prowl's odd device sucks the ace free of Outback's chest to sail into the claw-like contraption. Prowl. <laughs> there. Much better. Panel 3. With the kids now behind him, Outback approaches Prowl, hands raised into the air. Outback. Hands up, don't you? <laughs> Righto, you got your fancy thing in my bob. So how about you just leave me be so I can go walk about by myself? <laughs> <laughs> off, you, off you go. <laughs> yeah, see you later. <laughs> Prowl. Uh-uh, we're not done yet. Where are your two cohorts? Where are Runabout and Runamuck? <clears throat> they don't get fancy numbers. <laughs> Designations, <laughs> yeah. Designations. No. Yeah. <laughs> Panel four. Two laser blasts strike Prowl in the back. Prowl. Ah! <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Panel five. Runabout and Runabuck both stand with laser pistol ears in one hand and glowing energo blades in the other. Prowl now lies in pain at, the, at their feet, steam rising from his singed body. Note, both energo blades are approximately half the size of the one Outback displayed earlier in the story. Runamuck. Right here, Autobot. Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Runabout. Yeah, if you think you're taking us in, you're in for a huge disappointment. Prowl. Mm. <laughs> I think Mike should do all the noises for everything. <laughs> He's so good at it. Panel six. Outback stands protecting the three frightened kids as Runabout approaches him. Runabout continues to hold his laser pistol at Prowl, who shows no signs of getting up. Runamuck. Good to see you again, Pipsqueak. Faye. Outback, these blokes were in the ship we found you in. I thought they'd be your friends. Outback. Nah, they're about as much fun as a dropped pie. What are you two bargains doing here? I thought you'd cocked it for sure. I don't know if the emotion of the situation was was, was portrayed there, but I'll, I'll, I think he's very calm. Yeah. <laughs> he's Australian. He's just laid back. He's just laid back. They're about as, fun as, a, about as much fun as a dropped pie. <laughs> Panel 7. Runamuck turns back to look at Runabout, who is now holding the ace in his hands. Runabout. What's wrong with him? Run amok. <laughs> Who cares? Now that we got the ace, we can sell it to the highest bidder and live like cyber kings. Page 17, <laughs> panel 1. From behind Run amok and Runabout, framed in the background between them, Outback stands with the kids, looking just as worried as they do. Runabout. What do we do about our old partner? Two shares of the ace bounty is a lot more than three. Run amok. You're right. We'll take care of him and the flesh creatures in a minute. Panel 2. Laser pistol and energo blade still in hand, Run amok kicks Prowl across the face, causing his, causing his iconic head crest to break off and fly toward the foreground. Run amok. First, I want to take care of this meddling Autobot. There's a bit of Casey Kasem sneaking in there, that one. <laughs> First, I want to take care of this meddling Autobot. <laughs> yeah. Next up on the charts. <laughs> I have to talk about this. Some guy's dead fucking dog. <laughs> 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 fucking <I'll>... ponderous, man. <laughs> I watch it with those up-tempo records. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm trying to do a goddamn death take. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be like the best outtakes ever, I reckon. Those ones are fantastic. 
Panel 3. Close on Outback's knees and feet as Prowl's crest lands before him in the dirt. Outback. Huh? Panel 4. Runamuck once again menaces, menaces Prowl while Runabout cheers him on in the background. Prowl has clambered to all fours but remains vulnerable. Runamuck. What do you think, Runabout? Do I shoot first or knife first? Runabout. Knife him, Runabout. Knife him real good. This is so dark. (laughs) 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 You definitely got the right uh, battle charger, Ryan, with the knives. (laughs) (laughs) Panel five. From the top left of the frame, Prowl's crest flies into the panel, knocking the gun from Runamuck's hand before returning back in a circular boomerang-like trajectory to soar back into the foreground. Runamuck. (gasps) Out back from off panel. Sorry, mate. Can't let you do that. Panel six. Prowl's crest flies back into Outback's hand like Morjorn... I can always say that wrong. Mew Mew. Like a... Mjolnir. (laughs) Mjolnir, thank you. Returning to Thor as he stands in a combat-ready stance. Outback. Besides, that's not a knife. Oh, God. I totally missed that line the first time I read that, you son of a bitch. (laughs) Page 18, panel 1, splash panel. Outback lifts his own larger wrist-mounted Energo blade like Excalibur. In the background, Faye, Trevor, and Cameron stand cheering triumphantly. Woo. Outback. Now that's a knife. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that's Trevor cheering in the background. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In the background. okay. <laughs> Woo! Woo. <laughs> Anyone can be killed. <laughs> Panel two. Outback dives forward and with one mighty swing slices Runamuck in half, separating oh. his torso from his legs. Runabout stands petrified in the distance. Run amok. Yeah. Should have had Cyber do it. Yeah. <laughs> Outback. Ha! Get that into you, you flaming dropkick. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's a drop bear. <laughs> yeah. Panel three. Outback hurls his makeshift boomerang into Runabout's head. It bounces off the would-be Decepticon with a clang. Outback. Cop this, you dopey drongo. (laughs) (laughs) Cling. (laughs) Runabout. Panel four. Outback transforms into SUV mode and slams into Runabout's chest like a battering ram. Outback. I am the Knight Rider. I am a fuel-injected suicide machine. I am the rocker. I'm the roller. I am the (laughs) out-of-controller. Is that music? That one's for Caleb. <laughs> hmm. That's the, he's the he's the Mad Max fan, so we put that in for him. I was no. I was gonna say it's like is that is that like stolen valor when you put that in and not seeing the movie? That's a I mean I appreciate the reference. Don't get me wrong, but that's a I love it. I've seen Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> Page nineteen, panel one. With both Runamuck and Runabout laying defeated, Prowl is back on his feet. Outback stands. Outback hands his crest. Outback hands him his crest. Outback. Here you go, mate. Whack that back on your noggin. She'll be apples. (laughs) (laughs) I love that line. (laughs) Prowl. Uh, uh, Thank you, Convict C-59. Panel two. Close on Faye, Trevor, and Cameron. Faye. Hey, his name is Outback. Cameron. Yeah, he's a hero. Panel three. All three kids stand with Outback as Prowl looks down at the much smaller bot while reaffixing his crest. Prowl. Indeed. Thanks for the assistance, um, Outback. Uh, unfortunately, I still gotta take you in. Outback. Seriously? I know I had a bad trot for a bit, but I'm a changed bot. No need for any more Barneys. Can't we just share a cold one and shoot the... Panel 4. Prowl remains annoyed at Outback's (laughs) colloquialisms. Prowl Prowl remains annoyed. (laughs) Again, it's a big mood. It's a perpetual mood. Yeah. I I don't know what's happened to you here, 
but there's only one person who can solve this dilemma. Outback. Fair dinkum. Who? Panel 5, exterior. The streets of Mount Isa. Day. Caption. One hour later. (laughs) In the center of town, surrounded by a crowd of proud locals, Prowl stands holding the ace in one hand and a handheld holographic device in the other. The hologram shines a bright uh, blue color, revealing the face of Optimus Prime. Outback, Faye, Cameron, and Trevor watch on with anticipation. Meanwhile, both Runabout and Runabuck both bound by energon cabling, sit idly by in disgust. Optimus Prime. I can't ignore what you've told me, Prowl. It sounds like we have a tricky situation on our hands. Prowl. I agree, Optimus. We should just crack the heads. <laughs> you, can tell, you, can, you can tell that, that Greg wrote that part because color is spelled wrong. <laughs> Cooler. <laughs> Panel 6, close on Prowl's hand and the holographic image of Optimus Prime's face. Out back and the three kids look up from below. Optimus Prime. However, I also cannot overlook the heroism on display today. Page 20, panel 1. Still holding the holographic projector and its image of Optimus Prime's face, Prowl hands out back an Autobot badge. Optimus Prime. Convict C-59 for saving Prowl's life, defending the humans of Mount Isa, and helping to capture the criminals known as Runabout and Runamuck. I hereby bestow you with official Autobot status. Outback. Well, that's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, eh? (laughs) (laughs) Panel 2, close on the digital image of Optimus Prime's face. Optimus Prime. On the condition that you become Earth's official down-under guardian. I love that porno. (laughs) (laughs) Lots of dropped paws. (laughs) Panel three. Panel three. Prowl looks down at Outback and the kids. Outback has now placed the Autobot badge over the hole in his chest where the ace once sat. Prowl. Well, Outback... What do you say? Outback. Mate, there's only one thing to say. Panel four. With Prowl, the captured runabuck and runabout, the town and people of Mount Isa in the background, Outback in SUV mode zooms towards the foreground with Faye, Cameron, and Trevor celebrating in the cab. Outback. Crocky! <laughs> <laughs> See? And thus ends another issue of Transformers Reanimated. This is Honestly, one, thing, one this, thing to say. Fuck it. This, this <laughs> might be <laughs> my favorite one. It's, I, this one I think was we've so, said that every time. <laughs> I That's definitely true. haven't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I think this story needs to end with laughing, just just like we did. You know, like like a lot of those terrible episodes that you oh, know yeah. it's laughing into a freeze frame. You know, Ryan's favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> uh, edited in. <laughs> um, Can you I, take me? I would like my abusive father. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. all problematic. Speaking of problematic, um, I had a little gap of time here where I didn't have a line, and I have to tell everybody that I was wrong about the Independence Day <laughs> Welcome to Earth thing. <laughs> Uh, no shit. Well, Four out of five people <laughs> told you you were wrong. I must be confusing it with another line from that movie that people think is in there, but isn't. I mean, I, I'll, I'll come back to you guys some other time. I think I, you might be thinking of Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. I don't know what I'm thinking of. Moving along. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's another good one. Listen. I wasn't trying to make it awkward. You guys were right. I was wrong. I wanted to put it out there before the internet corrected me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, actually, he does say it in scene 27. It <laughs> <laughs> would, actually. <laughs> Gr- hey, great job, guys. Yeah. Or should I say Greg? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yoshi was... Yoshi's in there as well. There's lots of... Uh, like Yoshi's keeping lots- me honest with this one. C fifty nine. I think we should have like little asterisks down the bottom saying like 
what Outback is actually saying, like his translations and stuff. So, which, oh, that'd be that's fun. I we love were that thinking idea. about doing it, but then we were like, no, nah, maybe it's just it's kind of meant to be a bit weird and sort of mm-hmm. you know hard to decipher as well. So, yeah, especially it, once like Prowl and, and Run Amok and that turn up, they're sort of like, what's wrong with him? Like, <laughs> what <the fuck? laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> So I also see here that if this were a real episode of the Transformers, it would be Outback's one, two, three, I think fourth or one of four. He was only in three episodes, apparently. Does that sound right? Yeah, he's not in very many. I think he's in, he's in, he's in one with, I think it's, he's in one of the five faces of darkness. I think he's in one of them. He's in part one and five, and then in in another one called the Quintesson Journal. Is he? I don't really remember Outback from the show. Does he have an Australian accent? He. Oh sure. I would assume. I remember. He had, yeah, he has. He has. That's like, really uh, weird. That then he has they like put him Australian accent. Yeah. <laughs> like in only episodes that don't take place on Earth. <laughs> That's why we're fixing it. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Rick. Great. I feel like he sounded like Monterey Jack from Rescue Rangers. <laughs> oh my God, I think it's, that's a uh, deep cut. I think it's Burger who did his voice. It's either it's either Greg, Greg Burger. Burger Actually, <laughs> I have uh, Burger and Dan Gilvezan. I don't know how that, uh, according to TF Wiki, anyway. I don't know hmm. if Dan took one of the episodes and Burger took the other ones or something, vice versa. Or maybe they layered their voices on top of him. That's why it's so rich. <laughs> Thanks, <Next>, later. <laughs> Girthy. This alligator's big and heavy. <laughs> maybe it's a little bit of both. <laughs> It'd be a crocodile if he was a strap. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> Well, I'm no, glad we, thought, you guys well, we, we have been trying to sort of introduce characters as they came in and it was like that, that appear in season three without sort of any explanation. So we were, yeah. Well, and then that, we I, sort of sidetracked and sort of fell ass backwards into using the battle charges as well. So mm-hmm. that was cool. No, I also like that ultra Magnus is in here and like, cause it's something we, you know, obviously he was still around in, mm. uh, the larger universe of season three, but we just don't, you know, or uh, of season two, uh, one and two, but mm-hmm. see that that's what yeah. I like is when, when you do the mismatches that, that can't happen, like, you know, uh, especially ultra Magnus interacting with prowl, you know, because mm-hmm. in season three, uh, spoilers, uh, prowl is dead. And so, yeah. So, so creating these situations in retrospect, I, I think is really, really cool. Same with um, even Prowl and well, Prowl and everyone just about in this one. <laughs> yeah. So, so mm-hmm. out back and the, the battle charges. So now my favorite part is that we've got a whole new generation of Earth kids to fold into the storyline <laughs> and keep using time and time again for all kinds of crazy adventures that well, we can experience through their point of view. That was one of the reasons I picked Faye because I thought she was so much like she was brave and fun and like just down for everything that's happening. She's the breakout character. <laughs> She's the one that's actually like competent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other two are like, what? What's happening? I don't know, guys. She is the Hermione. We've established Trevor has been getting, like, beatings regularly. (laughs) That's that's canon now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who who started that? Me. (laughs) Was it you? Yeah, it was Trevor's dad. He was like, Trevor, get in here. (laughs) I recall Mike saying something about you could hear the belt unbuckle. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I'll own that Took one. Took me back to my own childhood. Oh. <laughs> Tr- triggered. Well, that's that's, that's not even that's not real. real. You yeah. got you had an adult fight you in your front yard. We don't have to legislate this I'm now. Sorry, as, as I didn't. <laughs> ah, that delightful. Well, uh, Aaron and Ryan, thank you so much for being with us on this ride. I really appreciate it. You guys rock. We love having you on. Uh, why don't you tell folks how they can find you two on the Autopod Decepticast, one of the best podcasts on the planet, Earth. 
certainly in the uh, Central Ozarks region. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you can find us on all your favorite podcasting platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and uh, check us on Twitter. We, we goof around a little bit out there. And what else? Am I missing something? Website, autopoddecepticast.com. Yeah, we're at a poddecast on all the things. Excellent. And Mr. Mike from Mike Seibert's Radio, your very own radio station, sir. Yes. Your very own podcast on the internet. Why don't you let folks know uh, how you can, uh, how they can find you? And again, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Love having you on, and we got to do it again. Absolutely, uh, you're welcome. This is uh, this is always a blast. I love kicking it with you guys. Real quick, you can listen to my show, Mike Seibert Radio, the same place that you listen to Autopod Decepticast. So uh, while you're listening to their show, check out my show as well. Um, I am on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, all of those at Mike Seibert Radio, and the spelling on that is S-E-I-B-E-R-T. If you just type Mike Seibert with that spelling into your Google machine or your internet browsing machine, uh, you'll you'll find me very easily. I am not the Mars Rover guy. I'm the podcast guy. Dope. And I'll be sure to make all of those links clickable on our website at uh, transformersreanimated.com. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun. See you guys. All right. Bye-bye. And until next time, wash your hands and make good choices. Bye, bye, bye. This is a good episode. (laughs) Megatron must be stopped no matter how.